Well, Jonathan, one of the things that, and I've shared with you, that continually drives me crazy about, about land, the average landowner is they will not go to the trouble to collect a soil sample before they take action. Yeah, I mean, it, it's pretty common. Um, it's, it's probably the biggest mistake you can make, yeah. um, you know, before you even right. start looking for what kind of tree you want to plant yeah. is, is knowing what kind of soil condition you have because yeah. certain soil conditions will completely rule out certain species of plants. Exactly. And you'll do everything else right and never understand in a million years why you, you have stunted plants or they won't produce yeah. or um, so very necessary it's a little extra work um you know you you finally got me with a shovel in my hand so we're gonna we're gonna show you guys uh <laughs> how to properly take soil samples uh we're also going to tell you um, where you should send them off to get analysis and how to uh how to interpret that analysis uh, will also be uh information you can find on the website yeah the uh the first the first question is how do we go about collecting the soil sample well i've got my my handy dandy little bucket here uh what you want to do the, the best approach is to collect, you could go through this like we have here about a half acre deer orchard. We could go through here and, and collect sample after sample after sample and have each one analyzed individually. Well, then we would have to put out whatever the lab recommends in fertilizer individually. And that's just not, not smart. So what I like to do is I like to take a random sample of soil from around the, the site, the food plot, or in this case, a deer orchard. and it's, it's pretty simple to do, but how you do it can be quite critical. Now, what we've got here is, is Jonathan has scraped off the top litter layer of the soil. We do not want to send the litter off to be analyzed. We're, we're analyzing the soil. It's about the soil. And that's what he's done here. And then the next step is we're going to take about a six inch sample. Okay. Uh, yeah, mistake, mistake number two, uh, after Mistake number one is not doing it. Mistake, num mistake number two is only sending the very top few inches of soil depth because um, the soil that we care about is, is a little deeper. So we're going to dig six inches, six to eight inches deep. And of course, we're doing this in August when the ground's yeah. nice and hard, you know. I thought we were going to be digging in sand. Oh. Yeah. There you go. All right, that's getting down there now. Okay. All right, and what he's going to do is he's going to put a sample in this bucket. How much do we want? That's just right there is just enough. All right, now we've got a little sample of, of soil from this hole. Now we're going to walk, we, I use a systematic approach, we're going to walk around to various places on this on this orchard in this case and collect the same samples now when we get through we're going to what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to use i like to use a gloved hand because you can have things on your hand but just get in there and mix it all up so you got a composite sample and then after that you've got to use a one of these soil sample bags now you don't have to use them you can use a sandwich bag but try to use a, a paper bag and what we want to do is put a subsample in the bag and on the on the front of it, it has place for your name, address, what, if you give it a sample number, or if you give it a name. I usually give it a name. This is this is deer art. Something that's identifiable so you know where you right. got it. You know where you got it. You're defeating the purpose if you don't remember where you got it. Yeah, and then the last thing on here says intended crop. And that's very, very important. If you're doing it for a food plot, you need to say, if it's a cool season plot, it's a cereal grain legume plot. If it's an orchard, you want to say, a fruit and nut orchard and write that on there. That's gonna make a big difference. Now, you can have two types of soil analyses run. The, the rudimentary or elemental soil analysis will just give you mostly micronutrients and some uh, micro, uh, macronutrients, excuse me, and some micronutrients, but ask for an extended one. What's it gonna cost? Probably $25. Yeah, it'd be the best $25 best you ever $25 spent. Best $25 you ever spent in your life, I'll guarantee you. And so we've got a, a link we're uh, on the website here where it gives us the soils labs in, in all the states. And then there are private soils labs. These are agricultural labs. And so get with them first. You can get, get bags. We've got them available on, through Wild Tree, but you can get a bag from the soil uh, lab you're going with. Uh, 
set it up ahead of time, collect your soil samples, mail them off to them, and in no time you'll get an answer back. What's, what's your typical expectation for turnaround time on a soil sample? Most soil, uh, the shortest I've ever had is three days. The longest I've ever had is two weeks. Right, so, so plan, so plan ahead. ahead. Yeah. Um, give, your t give yourself some time to get those results and maybe consult with us if you've got any further questions and we'll give you some recommendations on what you should be planting. And, and while we're on planning ahead, take your soil samples three to six months before you're actually gonna do something, be making amendments to the soil. Because a lot a of times time. you could, some of the amendments they're gonna ask for, like lime, uh, take a, takes you know, many days, many weeks to incorporate into the soil with rainfall. So it's always a good idea to get this going ahead of time. Absolutely. Well, I think that that's uh, sound advice and uh, hopefully you follow it and uh, we, we wish you the best of luck on your inst installation. Yep, do it right.